If you played Modern Warfare 2 after its release in 2009, that is a sound you will be intimately familiar with. It's a sound that resulted in either the elation of a kill, or in the case of 17-year-old me being shot by quickscopers, Quickscoping, the bizarre trick shot that Modern Warfare 2 players would spend hours perfecting, is one of the things that the intervention is most well known for. It went from an unknown weapon in the real world to a digital firearm capable of seemingly impossible feats of sniping, packaged up with an iconic sound that even now can trigger nostalgia in any veteran first-person shooter player. Manufactured by Shaytac USA, the M200 Intervention first entered production in 2001, and it quickly started to win records for its accuracy, even making headlines in 2017 when an SAS soldier used it to make a shot from over 1.5 miles away. But it wasn't just its accuracy that makes it notable. One of its most distinctive visual features is that the carry handle is placed below the main body, which basically means that you're carrying the thing upside down. A strange change to be sure, but an important one as the rifle weighs a whopping 29 pounds, or just over 13 kilos, which is certainly not the way it's represented in the multiplayer lobbies of Call of Duty. The intervention is a young and relatively unknown weapon. It has no real history to speak of, and as such, just doesn't have the legacy of many of the iconic arms that are a mainstay in our shooter games. It didn't help that the first game the rifle featured in was 2004's Sold in the Secret Wars, a title that was marred by buggy missions and received middling reviews. Another place you may recognize it from is in the hands of Marky Mark Warburg's Bob Blee Swagger from 2007 Shooter. While its presence on the silver screen in this sniping action thriller helped to give the intervention a little more time in the limelight, it would be the rifle's explosion onto the brand spanking new HDTVs where the weapon finally got the attention it deserved. After Call of Duty broke away from the World War II setting with the Modern Warfare series, the new modern backdrop proved to be an immediate hit with fans and critics alike, bringing with it a new style of game that was foreign to long-time Call of Duty players, as well as an armory of new age weapons to play with. Chief among them, the Intervention. First appearing in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the modern frame and design of the intervention made it a perfect fit for the franchise and made for a great addition to the game, whether it was in the hands of SES's Captain Price or XXX Bong Ripper 69 online. The intervention was instantly a hit with the game's multiplayer mode, with the weapon developing a lasting popularity and reputation due to it being one of the most used guns in the game, as well as being so prominent in the slew of shared content that dominated the web between 2009 and 2012. Classics such as Mum Get the Camera or the Magnum Opus Best Trick Shot Reaction Ever by the one and only I Trick Shots HDX. Oh god, can you imagine where these kids are now? 2009's Modern Warfare 2 was a huge success and catapulted not only the intervention but the phenomenon of quickscoping and trick shotting into the spotlight. Through the incredible popularity of both the game and the strange ways players were using the rifle, the intervention would become an instantly recognizable and iconic weapon in the FPS genre. The intervention would appear in other games like Armor 3, Battlefield 4, and Sniper Ghost Warrior. But in the years since Modern Warfare 2, the weapon has also made an appearance in one form or another in Call of Duty Online, Infinite Warfare, and Modern Warfare Remastered. A version of the beloved intervention even featured in Call of Duty Mobile, and through feats of dexterity I can only hope to achieve, there are folks out there landing trick shots on their phone. What made the intervention a cult hit among FPS players was, unlike guns like the AK-47, which had been around since the 40s, the intervention was a relatively new gun, and that made it interesting. In many ways, it helped put the modern in modern warfare. Many of the other weapons in Modern Warfare 2 had been seen before in some form or another, they were tools that people had already used or been exposed to in other games. The intervention was, relatively speaking, brand new. The intervention was also the only bolt-action sniper rifle to be featured in Creator Class in Modern Warfare 2, making it further stand out from the rest of the marksman rifles in the game. In a lot of shooters, there's kind of a misconception that when it comes to sniper rifles, the semi-automatic ones are faster and easier to use, but cause less damage, while the bolt-action ones are always slower and have a higher skill ceiling, but are subsequently much more powerful. While many still hold the opinion that the intervention is superior, in actuality the damage, accuracy and movement speed of the intervention and the Barrett 50 Cal were the same. So that begs the question, why was one so much more popular than the other? 
A big part of the intervention's appeal was the sound design associated with both the rifle and Call of Duty as a whole. The audible crack as you fired a round, the sound it made when you landed a shot, and the oh-so-pleasant feedback of a hit marker all now create a warm feeling of nostalgia for the iconic rifle. Sound effects are a grounding and memorable force in video games. In the same way the ping of an M1 Garand makes me nostalgic for the World War II shooters of my youth, the crack of the intervention and the following sound of a hit marker will always summon memories of me playing Modern Warfare 2 into the early hours. The hit marker being such a recognizable and nostalgic element of its own has also meant it's been part of the very same culture that made the intervention as popular as it is. It popularized a gameplay feature for FPS games to come, as well as being deep enough into COD's strange meme culture that it wasn't long until it was a huge feature in parody montages and even became available as a bumper sticker. The visual and auditory depiction of the intervention, combined with Modern Warfare 2's arcade-style shooter mechanics of mobility, aggression, and rapid killstreaks, was a perfect complement to the playstyle of speedy and powerful sniping. This created the perfect foundation for the player's popularity to skyrocket, and over time the hundreds of thousands of players that were taking to the battlefields of Favela, Skid Row, or Rust began to find new ways to make the most of the intervention's unique capabilities. You can't talk about the intervention without bringing up the bizarre ways that players flung around their rifles and took shots that would be impossible in the real world. Everyone who's played a Call of Duty title is familiar with the term quickscoping, whether you're on the receiving end or dishing out the punishment. While Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2 popularized the trend of quickscoping, players had been toying around with the mechanics since 2003 in Counter-Strike 1.6. Using the scout rifle or the iconic AWP would often see players rapidly scope in before a deafening bang, and then swap to their knife to cancel the animation of cycling the next round. The earliest known entry of the term was an Urban Dictionary post from 2007, where a player described the process in reference to Counter-Strike. But it was in Modern Warfare 2 where the trend really took hold. Given the speed at which Modern Warfare 2's gameplay unfolded, learning how to use rifles like the Intervention in a way that allowed players to be mobile and reactionary was almost a necessity. But what came next ventures further into the bizarre. Call of Duty became the poster child for those over-the-top moments in games, and the Intervention was the very nail that poster was hung upon. If you were playing Modern Warfare 2 shortly after its release, it was a common sight to see a ghillie-suited soldier, intervention in hand, jumping off of tall objects while rotating fast enough you thought they might actually take off. And while they may not have landed many shots, the ones that made contact would often be smashed together into montages and crammed into 2010 YouTube's algorithm until any video game related page was filled with recommendations of spinning frag videos. Trickshotting was a playstyle that was adopted to try and add a dose of creativity, style, and skill to landing shots with what was, at the time, one of the most popular weapons in all of Call of Duty. There was a fascinating quality of showmanship to using the technique, and as time went on, people would attempt to pull it off in tense moments as a way to turn the dynamic of a match on its head. For the flashiest kills, they needed the flashiest of weapons, and there could be no other choice than the intervention, a weapon that was truly starting to take on a life of its own. There was nothing quite like watching the kill cam and seeing someone land the game winning kill by spinning around and casually firing a bullet into an unsuspecting enemy in the distance. The popularity of this virtual firearm and the acrobatics associated with it led to a huge rise in players creating montages to show off their very best kills, to such an extent that whole teams and clans began to form around those videos cutting together their hottest intervention shots and tricks. One of those clans was FaZe. FaZe started life in 2010, as a YouTube channel showcasing the montages and clips that had been submitted to them, but has since become a massive esports organization with dozens of members, competitors, and streamers across multiple games including PUBG, Fortnite, CSGO, and of course, Call of Duty. Even now, if you go on their channel and sort their output by oldest, their second video ever was their first dubstep-filled sniping compilation, with, of course, the intervention. But that's not the only success story that started with the glance down a scope and the pull of a virtual trigger. Optic Gaming is another large esports organization that has their roots firmly planted in the Call of Duty subculture of sniping, trickshotting, and competitive play. If you go back to their very first video, one that is still listed as their most popular in the entire history of their channel, it takes just 34 seconds to see the first glimpse of the intervention. Now sure, these montages may have aged poorly, with strange contrast, color balance, and cuts stretched out to fit the pace of whatever dubstep was thrown over the clips. 
But the one constant that is still a pleasure to see today is the oh so recognizable silhouette of the intervention. Whether it be a 360 no scope, a YY, a ladder stall, or a throwing knife across the map, trick shots were the hottest thing to show off your skill, or in many cases, luck, especially if you wanted them to be accompanied by the feverish screams of the young or calls for their impressive feats to be catalogued. <laughs> While trickshotting may not be as huge today as it was a few years ago, there are still plenty of talented players out there that are keen to experiment with their games and show off their most bizarre exploits. People have even made their way to the mobile versions of Call of Duty to land shots that seem impossible on a phone screen, and literally within hours of the new Modern Warfare Alpha being live, there were trick shots being posted online, with fans pleading to any developer that dare listen to bring the intervention back into the spotlight of 2019. While it may be too early to tell if the new Modern Warfare will bring with it a modern revival of the trickshotting phenomenon, the impact of the intervention on gaming culture is undeniable. For a weapon that isn't even 20 years old, it has managed to capture the imagination of both FPS players old and new, who will always remember that iconic sound of the godfather of quickscoping. I hope you enjoyed this nostalgic look at a weapon that absolutely plagued my teenage years and definitely caused a broken 360 controller or two. For more deep dives just like this one, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss another episode of Loadout.